Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over my anime Blu-ray shelf and give you my yearly update to the collection. Let's do it. So the shelf pretty much looks the same as you can see here. Also, excuse the audio. I'm literally just using my phone instead of the uh, voiceover uh, microphone equipment that I use. So yeah, it's mostly the same. I do have a Kalak shelf with uh, some of the uh, Studio Ghibli movies and standalone anime films. I've done Blu-ray anime collection updates for a while now, I think since 2018. And while well, it's mostly the same, specifically this year, not a lot changed. And you'll see that I'm trying to film something different because otherwise I would just be highlighting the same exact thing from 2022. So for this video, what I'm going to be focusing on are the titles that I got in the year of 2023, which unfortunately were not a lot because I pivoted the channel heavily towards manga content and I've just been doing the seasonal anime reviews. So all the anime that I watch from the seasonal stuff, I enjoy, but most of them I don't feel the need to own physically. Some I do, some I do not. But who knows, uh, maybe by 2024, uh, we'll see a much different scenario if I go crazy and start getting all these releases that I missed from this year and previous years as well. So the first one that we're going to talk about is Call of the Night, one of my favorite shows from 2022. I love this anime so much. I liked it so much that I went ahead and started reading and picking up the manga as well. Kotoyama suddenly turned into one of my favorite mangaka. I love his distinct art style. I like the story here. It's sort of a coming of age vampire horror story as you have this kid going through uh, puberty and wanderlust, if you will. The visuals on this look amazing. I highly recommend it. The atmosphere and mood of the scenes are spectacular. If you've been following my channel, social media and all that stuff, you know that I tend to gravitate towards that ambiance of neon drenched scenes and, and looks and lighting and all that stuff. So uh, this is what attracted me at first for uh, Call of the Night, and I was not disappointed. I really love this series. Next one up is Re Cutie Honey, the complete OVA collection. I am not a fan of Cutie Honey, but I wanted to own everything from one of my favorite anime directors, Hideaki Anno. The animation looks really crisp, nice, uh, fan service I guess, but it doesn't bother me too much. And I guess the main driving force was, of course, uh, completing the uh, Anno collection, if you will. Speaking of Kotoyama, we have Dagashikashi Seasons 1 and 2. Now, what's funny about this is that the manga is unavailable and the anime right now you can only watch season two on crunchyroll so the only way to watch season one is obviously to get that uh, physical edition which i was happy to do so but dagashikashi another weird wacky creation very different from call of the night this one focusing more on candy and also sort of a coming of age story if you will with the main protagonist but yeah, pretty unique series, again, with striking character designs. I really enjoy that vibe that he's going for. Next up, we got Gunbuster. Again, a fantastic, emblematic series that I had to have. Kudos to uh, Discotech once again for making it happen, remastering this thing, looking absolutely beautiful on Blu-ray. A true classic of the mech genre that I think everybody should check out. The next one is Idia Zerum the Animation. I love the live action movies and I have to admit, I've never actually seen this OVA collection that was released way back in the day. So I'm really excited to check it out. Iria is a wonderful uh, sci-fi B movie, if you will, if you like that sort of thing. This was actually one of my most anticipated Blu-ray releases for this year. It is Mononoke. Once again, by the folks at Discotech, I am so happy to own this series. Visually, it is one of the best looking anime of modern times, in my honest opinion. 
And if you like yokai, Japanese folklore, supernatural stuff, and creepy stories, I think you will be right at home with Mononoke. We got Mushigo Tensei, season one, part one, part two. I really enjoy this series. I like that they freaking created an animation studio, Studio Bind, to make this adaptation because this is a very long running series, very beloved by light novel readers. I've heard some negative things about the manga, so I've never tried it out. And that's why I decided to collect the series in anime form. So really happy to own here season one, which I thought was phenomenal. From G Kids, we got Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.11, Thrice Upon a Time, aka the final rebuild of Evangelion movie. This is amazing that we have this. I, it's a little bittersweet because I remember when I picked up the first rebuild of Evangelion movie and the promise of what was to be when we got the second, third, and now this fourth one. And it's been a fantastic ride so far. Arguably one of the most ambitious movie projects when it comes to anime. And the fact that Hideaki Anno was able to rewrite Evangelion and make something new accessible for people while still being confusing, dramatic, and fantastical as with the original series, which was such a, an icon for otaku worldwide. I think this is my only Viz Media release, but here we have Pokemon Champions Edition, the first season of the anime. Now, the FOMO in me wants to start collecting a lot of Pokemon on DVD and Blu-ray, but I gotta control myself because I, I don't really need it. I just wanted this set for the nostalgia because this is my gateway into this whole world of anime and manga. The first anime that I watched and fully recognized that this is anime was uh, Pokemon back in the late 90s when we had the real, the original big three, which were Pokemon, Sailor Moon, and Dragon Ball Z. I watched all three, loved all three, and I always regretted not owning the three series in physical media, and I've slowly been working towards uh, building that collection where I have all that stuff that I watched from when I was a kid and all the stuff I enjoy now. Here is Ranking of Kings Season 1, Part 1. I am missing Part 2, which I've not gotten yet. I love this series so much. This was one of my favorite series from 2021 to uh, last year, 2022. I think this is Wood Studios' best work so far. And it is a lovely adaptation that I think stands superior to the original. I love the art design. I love the character. Prince Boji is a phenomenal character and a role model for kids. Uh, he is just a fantastic bundle of joy, such a wholesome kid. And the story just really plays out like a grand European fairy tale with Japanese sensibilities. And I think they knocked it out of the park adapting the manga. So highly recommend it if you want to check it out. Sonic X from Discotech Media. This is so fantastic. I love Sonic after Pokemon, also one of my favorite video game franchises. I love the character so much growing up. The Sonic X series is, in my honest opinion, the best adaptation of Sonic that we've ever had. I don't really care for the new movies or any of that stuff, but I love Sonic X and the Japanese version is so great. If you're a Sonic fan, this is a must own in your collection. I don't know if I mentioned this on the previous Blu-ray update video, but I finally got the Heike story or the Heike Monogatari, one of the best shows that I've ever seen. I love this. I think if you're a fan of Japanese history, if you're a fan of folklore, if you're a fan of samurai based stories, I think this is a must own on your uh, collection. It is a phenomenal interpretation of the Heike story as we follow the Taida clan and their fateful demise through the eyes of this young girl called Biwa. So if you're wanting something different, something that stands out, get the Heike story easily on my top 20 shows of all time. 
Uh, that's how much I care for it. That's how much I loved it. I highly recommend it. We got two more discotheque releases here. Urusei Yatsura. We got the first collection and the second one. So this would be up to episode 106. Volume 3 came out and Volume 4 comes out soon after uh, this video. So I need to get those to have the full Urusei Yatsura TV series. I don't own the movies, so I guess I'll slowly work towards owning those as well because I really enjoy Urusei Yatsura, a fantastic uh, emblematic series from back in the day, brought back by the folks at Discotech once again with a great image quality and a fantastic uh, physical release here on Blu-ray. Now, the DVD section is pretty much the same, except for one thing. This amazing series that I finally own for the very first time. I've seen it a million times, but I don't own it. And that is Tenchi Muyo. We got the first OVA series right here in this uh, Pioneer remastered by THX release. And the reason for me to go back in 2023 and start collecting DVDs is that some of these series unfortunately are not available and I don't think the interest is there for licensors to pick this up again, remaster and put out on Blu-ray. I'm not dissing on Tenchi Muyo, but let's face it, it's not gonna sell as well as a popular series like say the eventual release of Chainsaw Man on Blu-ray. And I know that Tenchi Muyo did get a Funimation Blu-ray release, but that is horribly out of print and really expensive. So I'm perfectly fine owning the DVD versions. I think it's a, a nice a nostalgia piece. I love Tenchi Muyo. And here is the first set. Unfortunately, the little slip here is sun faded, but what are you gonna do? Follow that by Tenchi Muyo Ryo Oki, the complete series. This is the Viridian set from Funimation. Another batch of 13 episodes. And the fun doesn't stop there. I also got the alternate series. We got Tenchi in Tokyo, the complete collection. This is from uh, Genion back in the day. All 26 episodes, I want to say. All in one cool package. We also got Tenchi Universe, complete collection. Also by Genion, same type of release here. Everything in one uh, giant jewel case. And Genion also released the movies. I was going to grab them individually, but then I learned that later on they released this movie collection set of the three films on one uh, jewel case here. So this is really cool. Now these next three items from the Tenchiverse are a little expensive. They are pretty rare. They're out of print. I don't know what the proper value is, because I've only seen a handful of them being listed on sites like eBay. So we got over here, you can see it, the Tenshi Muyo Special, the Nihoshi Special, I should say, and Magical Girl Pretty Sammy, both specials in one DVD set. This was pretty expensive, <laughs> at least for my budget, but I wanted it and there were only like three listings, or actually four, I lost a bit on, on the fourth one, and out of the other three, this was the cheapest one. It was a little bit scratched up, but it plays just fine. So I'm happy to get that. And the reason I wanted it, obviously it's part of the Tenchi verse, but the pretty Sammy spinoff was followed by her own uh, limited series. So we have Magical S Project, Pretty Sammy debut. This is volume one, followed by volume two here with uh, the subtitle is Pixie Misa Finale. I hope I said that right. Yeah, Pixie Misa. So this is a really cool release. Uh, volume two is easily obtainable. This one, you're gonna have to fork up a couple bucks to get. So I am missing uh, GXP on DVD followed by The War of Geminar. I hope I said that correctly. That's on Blu-ray, I need to get that. And there's the AI, or AI, Tenchi, however you pronounce it. That's a, an anniversary thing. I think it was an ONA of just mini episodes that together combined like, uh, to make like a 40 minute runtime. So with those three, I should have everything that was released stateside when it comes to Tenchi Muyo. I know there's more, 
But I think that's everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tenchi fans. And for the final section here of the collection, the movie stuff is pretty much the same. We got the Studio Ghibli movies. We I put out some of the anime films on DVD over here. And you can also see on this next cube, we got the anime Blu-ray films. Stuff like Deer King, uh, Project Echo, the final Blu-ray. I don't know if I mentioned that on the previous video. My dates are a little bit off in my head, but if not, uh, well, here they are. And one cool trick that I learned recently is that if you have egg cartons, you can put them on a Kalex shelf and they act as a nice little riser. So there it is, my anime collection update for 2023. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for all the likes, all the comments, for subscribing. You guys are fantastic. I love every single one of you. Thank you so very much. This is a genuine hobby of mine and a passion of watching anime and collecting it on physical media. So thank you all so very much. God bless, stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video. Thank you.